Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Empowered for Balance. My name is Amma Brew, your life balance strategist. Um, so do you struggle with your personal image? Do you struggle with, you know, even your personal style, how you carry yourself around? Um in your society or even on social media. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And today I have Danielle joining us. She's an image consultant and she's going to give us some strategies and some tips about how we can carry ourselves as busy women and as high achieving women who are managing different things. But before we go on, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button because that is how you're going to get notifications when we upload new episodes every week. Hi, Danielle. How are how are you? Hi, Alma. How are you? I am great. How are um? How is it going on your end with all this pandemic and everything? Oh my! Just keeping busy. I mean, I have five kids, homeschool, and I'm caring for my mom. So I am just yeah. all over the place. I'm sure as everyone else is doing this time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Tough <laughs> times. Yep. Yes. So tell us a little bit about you, who you are, um, what you do, and everything. Well, you just introduced me. So my name is Danielle Lamus and I'm married. I have six kids and their ages range from 17 to eight. I have an 18 month old grandson and I am currently living in Pennsylvania, originally from New Jersey. Wow. I have a background in finance and can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah, this is what I know different scale, but I have a background in um, banking and finance since I attended uh, Florida A.M. University where I studied business economics. So how did I get into where I'm doing? Well, we're exactly. That was later. actually going to be my next question. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I have always loved style. I've always loved clothes and um, I'm just doing what I love right now. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're doing an awesome work because, you know, the thing with personal branding and image and stuff like that, it's a lot of things that a lot of us women struggle with, Absolutely. especially even after having kids because our, our body changes, everything changes, you right. know. So what exactly do you do? I know you are an image consultant, but just share with everybody what exactly you do and how you work with your clients. Okay. Um, well, let me just share a little background of why I became an image consultant. I used to, um, I started off as a independent beauty consultant, okay? I've always loved to help people. And like I already mentioned, I always, always like styled, always like makeup, all of those things. And um, I just always like helping people. I just like to speak into people's lives and encourage them and kind of like be their cheerleader. Mm -hmm. in the background, you know? And when it came to style, I remember when I was in high school, I took a pair of jeans and I cut them up and then I washed them and then I cut them some more and then I washed them. And then I stitched um, lace in the holes and created what they now call distressed jeans. I was wearing them back in high school. Now, if you could have seen my mother's face when I, I just literally destroyed my jeans, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. So I've always liked to um, be different with my clothing and with my appearance. But what I found is when I was um, an independent beauty consultant and I'm teaching women about skincare and I'm teaching them about makeup and how to apply it appropriately, although they were doing all the steps, they was doing all the motion, but it was just something missing and it was just something not connecting yeah. with these women and um you know I, I just wanted to do more i wanted to do more it's like how can i do more and i remember um a few years back i was in church you know i'm very active in my church i'm very active in the women's ministry and we had a group of women that was sharing their testimony mm -hmm. now here we have a group of women different background different ages um from different all different parts of the world but I noticed a common theme with all these women, Ama. They were sharing how life hit them and they made bad choices and where the bad choices took them. And, you know, then they met, you know, they gave their life to the Lord and got saved and, you know, God turned their lives around. 
But the common thing that I noticed, Alma, with these women is that all of them were struggling with their image. Yeah. All of them were struggling with how they felt about themselves, how they saw themselves, and um, the lack of what their expectations they thought for themselves, Mm -hmm. which led them to making bad choices, which led them down, you know, the the road that bad choices will lead you down. And that just grieved my heart. I mean, my heart was broken listening to this woman. And one, one of the young ladies in particular, I'm looking at her, I'm like, wow, she's a beautiful young lady. And just to hear how she felt about herself from the inside. And I was like, Lord, I just want to be able to do more. And then I realized that image consulting was actually a career, you know? Wow. So I began to pursue that. Um, that led me to where I am today, where I help women um, just be confident in themselves. I help them in how to present themselves, how to speak, body language, as well as appearance and wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I love everything about everything you said in the sense that your kind of image consultant is not just about, you know, the physical look, but you're also helping these women with, you know, how to carry themselves, how to talk, how to, so all these things come in here. And it's funny because if you don't know how to talk and how to manage yourself and how to express yourself and how to, you know, comport yourself out there, Mm -hmm. You right. can have the best makeup and have the prettiest face. You're going to be a put off you know, yes. to people. Yes. So I think that what you do is really good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, you had mentioned that there are four facets of our image. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. When I'm coaching um, with my clients, I have taken our image and I broke it down into these four facets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, The first is our inner image. Mm -hmm. This is how you see yourself. This is how you feel about yourself. This may have been developed over time, through experiences, through expectations from other people. This is the image that you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. Yes. You see something totally different from what everyone else sees. So first I, you know, I share the um, importance of the inner image and, and identifying what that is to, to you, to me, you know, to us as individual. And then the second is our physical image. And this is what we see, you know, this yeah. is the outer image. This is, you know, how we comb our hair. This is the clothes that we're wearing. This is the makeup that we're applying. This is, you know, what shoes are we wearing, what our outfits how we walking, all of that. This is just a physical outer image. And what people see on the outside may not necessarily match what we see of ourselves on the inside. You know, yeah. so it could be a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And um, how you see yourself on the inside is how you project yourself on the outside. Is It affects how you engage with people and how people engage with you. Yeah. Now, the third is our digital image. Hmm. You know, we're in a digital world now. So (laughs) that's social media, that's, uh, you know, email, that's texting, that could even be through eBooks. If if you're an author, you know, it's what you're putting out there. And I primarily work with women and I encourage them to be very mindful of what they're posting on social media. Yeah. To make sure what it is that they're posting, identify with who they are and who they want to become and who they're striving to become. Yeah. And I've seen um, in my career, not just as image consultant, but back when I was in banking in the corporate America, people were losing their jobs because of what they were posting on social media. Mm. So this is the image. You know, people may not meet you face to face now. You know, they're They may meet you virtually. So now you have that virtual image and how you're presenting yourself virtually. And then the fourth is the active image. This is when people get the opportunity to interact with you, to engage with you, to have a conversation with you, to actually see if their first impression of you that they may have gotten from your physical appearance. Now doing your active image, now they see if they were on point 
with their first impression, you know? Yeah. I was like, you know, when I first met her, I thought she was nice and now I had opportunity to interact with her. Wow, she is nice. She's really nice. So now you get the opportunity to see if this person that you have this impression is actually what you, what they had impressed upon you. Yeah. 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 Wow. I love the way you break it down. And so which of these images is more important? That, that's if any of them is more important. I would say the inner image is more important. Yeah. That is so important because it makes a huge difference in how you carry yourself. It makes a huge difference in how you speak to people. Like if you do not, let's say you're an insecure person. Yeah. When you speak to someone, you're going to look down, you know, you're going to talk softly, you're going to whisper, and people are going to be like, what did you say? <laughs> Can you speak up? I can't hear you. And they may not see you as insecure, but the way you carry yourself, they may, you know, start to get that impression of, you know, she's not as confident as I thought she may yeah. have, you know? So how you see yourself, I think, is primarily the most important. But it is really important that you identify all facets of your image and make sure that they are in sync, you know, yeah. with each other, that they are you across the board. You know, you're not one person in there, and then you're totally different when you're dressing, and then your digital is like a whole nother person. It's like you have a split personality here. You know, they don't know the real you. <laughs> <laughs> yep 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 i I, li I like your last point about being consistent because then that means that we have to be true to who we really are exactly in what we put out there because um if you're putting out something else and that's not who you are people are gonna see through the mask and the facade eventually yes they will so. you know and i believe that we're all fearfully and wonderfully made yes. and god created us and his image and when he looks on us he is proud and you know we bring him joy so let's just be who he created us to be yes 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 that's very true because you know a lot of us women have that big challenge where it's hard for us to again with the inner image that you're talking about to accept ourselves just the way we are Right. Um, also because of what the media out there, social media, and it used to be the traditional media. Now we have social media bombarding us with images every day yes. about who we should be that at the end of the day, we end up feeling so bad, like we're not good enough. And we end up mm -hmm. looking down on ourselves because we can't fit this perfect image that is being put out there. Right. And then also when we compare ourselves to other people on social media or even on TV and all over the place because these people are showing us their strengths. Mm -hmm. And because we we haven't learned to accept ourselves just as God made us and to value ourselves for who we are, we end up, you know, looking down on ourselves because they are showing something that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And we are comparing ourselves to it. Instead of to instead of us to realize that we are we are good just as we are because we also have our own unique set of strengths. Right. You know? So can you speak a little bit to that? Um, how do you help your clients get to that place where they can love themselves just as they are? Well, my number one rule, do not compare yourself to yes. anyone. That I is a no, that. no, no, do <laughs> not. You are unique. You have your own gifts and talents and strengths like you just mentioned. Um, but a lot of times what I do with my clients is try to get to the core of their in, in, inner image and why they feel or believe um, the way, what they believe about themselves, yeah. you know, because sometimes something may have happened in our lives and then, you know, we think they were ugly and yeah. we carry that, you know, or we may have been carrying that for years. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it takes... Um, a couple of the sessions to uncover the core root of that yeah, and then begin to speak to that. Um, but we have to, we have to identify who we are and our strengths. You know, mm -hmm. we all have weaknesses, but we have more strength than we do weaknesses, you yeah. know? Yeah. And there's different things that God has called us to do. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to be different. 
Our yes. strength is going to be different. <laughs> yes. And you know, social media, people always paint a perfect picture, you know. Exactly. <laughs> They don't put out there the hard work or, you know, the trueness of what's going on behind the scenes. It's like if you were to, oh, I, I'm, I'm sharing a story. The other day I was looking at some photos of um, back a couple of years for Easter. You know how you try to get a family photo? Mm -hmm. All of them were horrible. You know, my kids were looking <laughs> in all different directions and, you know, making faces. And then you, but you look on social media and you see these perfect Exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes, not my family. None of them are perfect. But you don't know what happened behind the scenes to try to get that to look perfect. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it is perfect, you know, yes. if that makes sense. So yep. be true to who you are. Accept yourself, you know, for who you are. And if there's something that... um you don't like about yourself. First thing I say, accept yourself. You know, there's yeah. just, you know, there's just certain things we cannot change about ourselves. You know, I can't change my height. No mm -hmm. matter what I do, I am not going to get any taller. You know, <laughs> I'm stuck right there. Yeah. Um. So there's some things that we we just have to accept yeah. about ourselves, but there are some things that we can change, and you know, it's okay to reach out for help for those things that we can change. Like if you're not happy with your weight, yeah. that's something that, you know, you can change. You can put yourself, um, work with um, a nutritionist or something mm -hmm. that can help you, that can help you stay accountable to those things. So, you know, there are some things that you can change, but um, love yourself, you know, yeah. love who you are because God loves you. You know, exactly. that's why my clients, God loves you very much. Yep. Yep. And you're made in the image of God. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we've spoken about the inner image. Let's talk a little bit about the physical image, because, you know, as women, when we have kids, our body changes a lot. And sometimes it's hard for us to learn to accept who we, the new person that we've become. Mm -hmm. So what tips do you have for moms out there who are still trying to look cute even with their changed bodies, um, you know, what, and they still want to look decent because probably there are certain things you could wear before you had kids that probably you may not be able to wear again because your body changed. Right. Yeah. So what tips and strategies do you have for a mom out there who is looking to still look beautiful? Well, um, again, I always tell my clients, except where you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have six kids, so I understand <laughs> the changes <laughs> that our body goes through. Um, so sometimes we we just have to adjust to where we are now. So I encourage my clients to make sure they're wearing clothes that fit, yeah. that fit them right where they are. It makes such a big difference because when you're wearing oversized clothing, it tends to, to look a little sloppy. And then when you're wearing um, clothing that's too tight, then it just look like it's um, uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, so I do encourage to first work clothing that fits you right where you are, mm. you know, right where you are. And I understand a lot of ladies say, well, you know, I'm holding on to this outfit because <laughs> I'm going to get back in it. Um, I, if you've been holding on to it for six years, <laughs> It may be time to let go. I understand. I'll hold your hand all the way. Um, but, you know, we have to accept where we are. We have to accept those changes. May do with what we have and just move forward with that. Definitely wear colors that make your skin glow, that make you shine, um, that make your eyes pop. You know, you want to make sure you wear the nice colors. And I understand some some women may like, well, I like this color, but it doesn't look good on me. Yeah. Well, if it's a color that doesn't look good on you, you don't want to wear it around your face. But you can probably mm -hmm. wear it on the, you know, lower bottom part of a top or maybe use it as an accessory. You can use that color, you know, and a good color would be neon green. Some women I love oh, yeah. neon green. I don't know who, but someone out there may like that color. But it may not be a complimentary color for them. So they can use it in, in an accessory. Yeah. 
That's true. Yeah, wow. you can do that. Wow. Awesome. And what about, you know, a woman who has multiple responsibilities? You know, because a lot of the women who watch this program and or listen to the podcast, or even a lot of the women who I give this to as resources, are high achieving busy women who have different responsibilities. So they're run their moms rushing to work, trying to work, you know trying to do a lot of zoom while they're being moms and uh maybe they have other responsibilities outside their house in terms of the community you know so they're doing all these things um what kind of strategies would you have for us and you know um finding things to use or things to wear that are fit for all these responsibilities that we have mm -hmm. um but don't make us feel like oh i now have to go change my clothes and put on this attack you know i don't know if you get what my question is yeah i no. i think i do um i find if you're busy and you're wearing multiple hats definitely to stay on top of your wardrobe and to stay on top of your image you need to do some planning and yeah. that may be um pulling outfits together the night before mm. you know Keep in mind what you have planned for that next day. So let's say you're just running errands, you have a couple of Zoom meetings, you may have a doctor's appointment, but you know, you still want to look stylish, you still want to look polished, you still want to look like you are, you know, poised. Yeah. So I encourage women to um, plan out their outfits the night before mm. and come up with a uniform for them. That uniform, um, I use myself an example. I'm always running somewhere. So I always grab a pair of dark wash jeans. You know, they look polished. Um, they look elegant when you wear them and you can mm -hmm. just wear a nice top with them or in a blazer and whatever shoe you want to wear and you're out the door. Mm -hmm. You know, so my top is nice. I have a nice accessories. I can sit down and do Zoom because I don't look for the waist up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, you want to have, you know, have that in mind, um, have a customized skincare and makeup routine for yourself. Yep. I tend to do my makeup in like 10 minutes or less. So I know what I want to put on. I have like the same products I grab. I have mm -hmm. them accessible that when it's time for me to apply my makeup, I'm not looking all over for them. They're all in one location. I can just reach on and I know what I'm going to put on because I have a look customized mm -hmm. for me. 10 minutes or less, I have my face on and I'm out the door. So planning, customizing, um, creating a uniform that's to your style, to your liking. You know, you might like skirts. So you just have, you know, a skirt and a top that you know you're going to wear to keep, you, keep yourself looking nice and polished and poised. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, yeah. you know, um, a lot of the moms that I work with, they're like, well, I don't even like to dress up anymore because as soon as I wear it, these kids are just going to come and mess it up for me with their juice and their food and everything. So what do you have to tell that mom out there who is like, I don't even want to dress up anymore and I'm done with all that because it's not even worth it <laughs> you know, anymore. <laughs> um, what do you have to tell that woman, you know, to get her to realize that she's still, it's still worth it? In oh yeah, way. it's still worth it. Although she's a mom, she has kids, but she's still worth it, you yeah. know? Even if she's just dressing up to look cute for herself, you know, just to, that actually, you know, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel yeah. good, you look good. And you, you know, you feel like you could take on a day when mm -hmm. you feel good about yourself and you know you look good about yourself. Um, you may have to do some adjusting in your wardrobe, you know, depending on your, your kids and their age. I remember when my kids were younger, I stopped wearing white, you know, yeah. can you imagine <laughs> juice and grape and all kinds of candy. So I stopped wearing white for a long time and I start wearing a lot of dark colors. Yeah. You know? um, black is a nice color, but sometimes we tend to hide behind black. So we'll wear white, you know, mi mixed in or another color with it. Mm -hmm. So if you're concerned with your kids getting your clothes dirty, maybe to, you know, wear some dark colors that, you know, doesn't show up right away, but yeah. you can still look cute. You know, again, dark wash jeans. If yeah. I, I'm a jeans woman. I love my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But when I was in the office, you know, I always had black pants. I have, you know, quite a different um, black slacks and I just had a different top to go with it and a different blazer to put on top of that. Yeah. So there yeah. are some, some um, workarounds that you can do. The key thing is to do it. Yeah. You know, it's just to, just to take that time, put on something that makes you feel beautiful, put mm -hmm. on that top that's everyone has complimented you on, you know, the clothing that everyone says, wow, you know, you look beautiful in that, put that on yeah. and just go about your day. And I can guarantee when you look good and you're feeling good, your day just goes by yeah. you know, a lot easier, a yeah. lot smoother. Yeah, I can agree with you too, you know, more because I think, yes, that's very true. You know, when you dress up, um, it's like days that you really dress up, you feel so confident. Yes. That's it's like, you just feel good about yourself all day. Yes. Yeah. So that's, yes. that's good. All right. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, digital branding, because as you mentioned that also, um, what tips do you have for that woman out there who is active on social media, probably maybe for business or for her own personal stuff? Mm -hmm. um, what strategies do you have for us um, to brand ourselves properly so that we are not messing up? Well, if you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, let's talk about that. You want to think about what image you're putting out there. Yeah. You know, um, who are you? What is your mm -hmm. business about? Why are you on social media? You know, those are the questions you want to ask. And if you are looking to build a team, then you want to um, be genuine with who you are yeah. and what you're posting, you yeah. know, um, for a personal, for mom, just be authentic, mm. you know, just be authentic for uh, entrepreneurs. You do want to col consider colors, you know, you want to have a, a, a color scheme that is um, throughout your posting because you know people like aesthetics mm -hmm. you know, like a nice clean like oh this is pretty and then they, you know you draw them in so be mindful of the colors that you're posting uh, when it comes to your personal branding but remember personal branding is being true to who you are yeah. you know allowing um, your clientele or those that are looking at your site to see you to see what you're bringing to the table to see what you have to offer. Wow. That's, that's, that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you know, I know you really enjoy what you do. And so, you know, what do you find most rewarding with this work that you do in helping women brand themselves? You know, um, I had a business meeting today and in the meeting was one of the ladies that I've worked with. When I had one session and um, COVID is kind of through a monkey wrenching on us getting back together. But she shared, um, she shared with the group what she got out of the session that she and I had mm -hmm. and how she felt and how much more confident she is in doing her business. Mm -hmm. And she was almost in tears I'm almost in tears. You know, the lady's almost in tears, just listening to her share her heart. Yeah. And what I find rewarding is when a, a woman comes to me and they say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for seeing me, you know. Thank you for telling me that I am valuable and, and yeah. telling me that I am worthy. Thank you for listening to me and not judging me and you know, not telling me who I should be, but accepting me for who I am. Yes. And that's what's most rewarding with what I do is when I come back and they just say thank you, you know, yeah. and they feel so much better about themselves. Yeah. You know, I do get in their closet. I do go <laughs> to their really? house. And, yes, I do. I go in there and I, I help them with their wardrobe because, you know, we do have to work on the outer image. But it starts with the inner image. And once the inner image is, once they identify how they see themselves, and then they say, this is not what I want to see anymore, yeah. you know? And I help women create what I call a personal image statement. Yep. And this statement is where they put into words the image they want to convey, yeah. whether it's in their business, 
whether it's at their nine to five job or whether it's just day to day, you know, they want to come across as intelligent or they want to come across as successful or joyful. I help to identify who they are and how they want to present themselves. You know, it starts again, it starts with the end image, but then once we have those, that statement into words, then we work on the outer image. Yeah. Then we work on the wardrobe. Then we work on the clothing and the pieces that will convey that image that they want to present at, you know, present themselves to the world. So I love what it's like, oh, I love my closet now. I love my clothes now. I, <laughs> I know what to wear. Yeah. I know how to put on my makeup, you know, all the things that, you know, all the little things that we do just to make ourselves presentable. When they come back and say, Danielle, thank you. Wow. It's so rewarding. So yeah. rewarding. Yeah. 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 It's, it sounds like good stuff. I think you need to come to my house also. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I like traveling. So. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's it sounds like, you know, most of the time when you hear personal branding and personal stylist and cons- image consultant, it's like, it's only for people who are out there in terms of like the stars, the celebrities mm-hmm. and all that. So it sounds like great stuff, you know, that you're mm-hmm. doing, helping women, you know, just, I, w- I don't want to use the word ordinary, but helping the everyday woman also brand herself in her own way so I think it's really good stuff that you're doing well thank you yep yep so where can we find you well I do have a website it is um dlimageconsulting.com I'm also on Facebook and I'm also on Instagram under the same name DL Image Consulting Awesome. And what are your last words for us, especially for that woman out there who has been hit by this whole pandemic going on and doesn't seem to have it all together and is so stressed out and it's like, you know, wakes up in the morning and is like, doesn't even know what she's doing, how much more even have time to take care of her image and herself, you know, so what, what's your last words, you know, to that woman? Well, um, <clears throat> first thing I would say to her it's going to be all right yeah you know it's going to be okay um we will get through this and we're not alone you know we're all going through this together we our plates may look different but we all have a overpowering stuff on our plates that we're all working through but we will get through it and just don't allow what's happening around us to contaminate who we are on the inside. Yes. You yeah. know, let's remain true to ourselves and let's just pray and, and ask God for wisdom and grace and direction. And he yeah. will always, he will always make a way. He will always provide. He will never leave us. He will never fail us. Yes. You know? And um, I find when I'm getting frustrated and frazzled, it's because I'm trying to do everything within myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to do it myself. I'm I'm trying to handle everything. I'm trying to be superwoman and just, you know, take off. And God is like, let me handle this. You know, God is like, catch the burden over to me. Give it to me. Let me deal with this. And I'm tugging with them. You know, I'm having a tug of war. But once I let it go, yes. once I let it go and say, you know what, Lord, you deal with it. I ain't got time for this. You, you handle it. It just brings me so much peace. Yeah. So yeah. I encourage everyone to not to lose themselves during this time. We would get through it and remember that you are created in God's image and he loves you very much. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. And on that <laughs> note, thank you so much for coming on the Empowered for Balance show. I really appreciate you taking time of your busy schedule, you know, to thank be you. here. 
Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you so much for sticking with us till the end. Um, as Danielle said, you know, we don't have to be superwomen. We can't, we don't have to do it all by ourselves. We should let go of the control and let God have his way in our lives. And we should also realize that we are made in the image of God. You're beautiful in your own way. And God has a purpose for creating you as you are. So learn to embrace yourself and love yourself and see yourself as God sees you because he made you for a purpose and you are made in his image. Again, this is Alma Brew, your life balance strategist. And I hope to see you next week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button because that is how you're going to get notifications every week when we upload new episodes. Take care of yourselves and see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>